Welcome back to Stand Firm 360. I've had the chance to at least visit here from many of you. I'm Jake McCandless. Our host, Sherilyn, is off today, uh, but we're going to have a panel. Me and uh, Lisa Gallington are going to be on talking about, uh, number one, diving into what's been our subject all month long, uh, looking at how to navigate these uncertain times that we're in. Uh, the book of the month was my new book for uncertain times. I hope you've had the chance to check it out. A devotional book, but it walks through. Listen, we, we've got all these ideas of how we should live in these crazy times, but it's not the first time God's people have been in crazy times. And so we can open up the scriptures. We can see in his word. We can see how we should live and how God responds, what he calls us to do. So I encourage you to check that out if you haven't. There's a link somewhere and wherever you're viewing this as well. Uh, another thing I would like to get into is just talk about some of the significant events that are going on. And so I'd really love to hear from you. That's why we do this. So all month long, we focus on a subject. We start with the, I teach it, introduce it, we bring our guest in, and then we hit it with a panel and we just take questions for the whole hour uh, this last Friday of the month. And so get in here, get in the conversation. Two things I, I'd love to hear from you initially. One, what's the best advice you've come across in navigating these uncertain times? Love to hear that. So put that in there. Number two, what's a significant current event? You're like, man, I'm watching this. Uh, this has my interest. Uh, but then anything uh, in lines of standing firm, remaining faithful, prophecy, get in the mix, bring them up. We'll love to deal with them and talk with them. Uh, so again, glad to have everyone joining us. And wow, my screen has just gone crazy. Let's just try that again. So, so I'm excited to have Lisa joining us. Many of you have already had the chance to hear from Lisa. So Lisa manages and publishes our blog. And so every Tuesday, every Thursday, uh, there's a new article, a new post on Tuesdays. It's uh, just talking about stand firm. And so it's challenge, encouragement to remain faithful, talking about issues with that, talking about prophecy. And on Thursdays, uh, we have a parent blog. And so I encourage you to check that out. I know it's such a strange, I was just talking to someone this morning who's going to be a guest on our, our podcast and for parents. And they're like, how does this work? How's a prophecy guy talking about parenting? Well, I think we need to take everything within theology, Christian teaching that we live out, reverse engineering by looking at the end of the age, what we have in scripture, and then living towards that. I think we should do that in everything. We should do that in evangelism and discipleship, uh, how we do church, all of that. And so that's some of the things that we're trying to do with Stand Firm. But the number one area in which we're seeing people turn away from the faith is the emerging generation. And so that's why we started the, the parent initiative. Harold, great to see you on. And so I've shared this story, I think, every time we have Lisa on. Uh, but so at the same time, I wrote Spiritual Prepper. Lisa released a book called End Time Preppers. I encourage you to check that out as well. We also released a devotional book called Invincible. And around the same time, uh, Lisa released a devotional book through Hebrews 11 about uh, faith and being faithful. And so it, it's crazy how different parts of the world, uh, God has put us on the same path. And so I'm excited to have this conversation today. Lisa, if you'll come on. And I want to dive into how to navigate uncertain hey, times. Hey, how are you doing? I am good. I'm glad to be doing this and glad to have this conversation today. And I, I know your heart is much like mine. It's it's not so much about the, the teachings, not to discount that, but it's we don't want to just give juicy prophecy information. We want to help people navigate these times. And I know that's why you've written the books that you've written. So there's no doubt we're in uncertain times. We're in crazy mm -hmm. times. I used to, when I would go speak in, in churches, I would spend the first part of the message just trying to convince them, hey, these could be the last days. Now I, I spend like a minute on it. I'm like, you know, I don't have to convince you. Uh, you can look at the news and, and feel that that's the case. But, you know, and so I, I think we're all just seeing these times as significant. They're definitely crazy, definitely for us here in the States. So we want to talk about just how, how should we live in these uncertain times? I know that's something on, on your heart. If you're posed that question, what's, what's really the first thing that uh, comes to your mind? 
I would say for me, what I'm finding to be the most important thing to navigate the difficulties in the world right now is being in tune with the Holy Spirit. Um, you've got a, a devotional in your book on keeping in step with the Holy Spirit. And um, I just feel like developing the practice of communicating with the Holy Spirit, listening, asking uh, for direction, and then waiting for an answer has been not only something that's giving me peace through all of the disruptions that are going on in the world, but also just teaching me that pattern. Because I think as things get more and more difficult, it's going to be harder to develop such patterns. It's much better to have the pattern already developed and be ready to, to move forward with every decision I make, you know, before I take yeah. a shot, before I, you know, before I buy this thing or whatever to um, ask the Holy Spirit. And um, it's just been a really good practice learning to stop and talk to the Holy Spirit. And I think it would be beneficial for everybody just to develop that now. Oh, yes. I, I couldn't agree more. I, I mean, it's incredible. We had our, our good friends on, uh, Tim and Darcy, who worked with Voice of the Martyrs for several years and was talking with them. And one of the things they said is like, you know, unfortunately here in the States, we could like go a period of time without checking, or at least we think we could go a period of time without checking in with the Lord and receiving guidance uh, from the Spirit. But he talked about, you know, in persecuted countries, it's a, you've got to know what you need to do that day, you know, where you need to step, where you need to go. It's a matter of life and death. And uh, and I, I think that's ultimately the case, regardless of where you are, regardless of persecution and those things, but just the importance of that. But what you said about doing it ahead of time, I last week, we uh, last uh, David was just talking about how I've been out of pocket and, and had been answering his messages. And uh, last week, we so. I'm part of a launching a, a network of small groups, again, looking at reverse engineering. How should we do church in light of what we saw during COVID? How should we wake up and do church differently? And so we're doing a, a network of neighborhood Bible studies. Uh, we call them connection groups. And that we, we had our, we've been doing it for a year, uh, but we had our first collective gathering, gathering these groups up to, to worship publicly. Uh, and so, we're preparing for that. It was just a busy, busy week with that. Then a lot of other things came into that. And like the whole time I'm, I'm just so involved in what I feel called to do and doing all these things. And it's one of those things that I know at some points in my life, I've just been busy and not sought the Lord, but this is one of those things. The Lord brought the busyness, but it was because I had been having, you know, been in daily prayer, daily seeking the Lord because it's like I got so tired and just so brain drained that I, it's just like mm -hmm. I didn't know what, you know, was next. I couldn't just think I couldn't really focus in on the Lord. But then I could go back and I had all this prayer journaling and, and direction beforehand. It's just like I just can stay in that lane. And I, I think we go through periods in life where life just gets crazy uh, and we need to be. And, and it's not going to be, you know, it's not in that craziness that you can begin to develop this time walking with the Lord. Because it's it's something that it develops over time, and it? it's not just something that just happens right away. What, what do you think about that? Yeah, I definitely think it's a practice. It's a discipline that we need to learn. Um, you know, just this is what I recommend for people to do is is just choose one area of their life where they think they're already living pretty victoriously, and start with that area. Like mm -hmm. maybe maybe they're doing pretty well with driving. You know, they don't speed, they don't break the laws or whatever. And so they they feel like they're doing pretty good there. So if it's an area that they already feel a little bit successful, it's also an area where they're not going to be um, as quick to drop off the bandwagon if things don't go well. But anyway, basically just say, OK, so, Lord, what I'm going to do is I'm going to commit to you that I'm going to drive according to the way that you want me to drive. So, you know, I'm going to get in the car and I'm going to say, okay, I'm going to this destination. I know three different ways to get there. Which direction do you want me to go? And just as you start driving, sense, you know, be a, attentive to whether the Holy Spirit leads you to go one way over another. If he doesn't, just go whichever way you want. Um, you know, and then try to be sensitive to the Holy Spirit as far as, you know, passing, speeding, turn signals, whatever, and try to just keep that in check, being aware of what the Holy Spirit's asking you to do. So if you're doing it in an area of your life where you're already fairly successful, do it long enough to develop the habit of continually talking to the Lord about that area and then bring in another area like maybe eating. 
um, it's always easier to do this with tangible things. So for me, eating is very tangible. You know, I'm going to put something in my mouth, stop and ask the Holy Spirit, is this something you want me to eat right now? And it seems like it's kind of crazy to do that, but it does develop the pattern. And I've found, you know, even with eating, it's makes it makes a big difference in my life. Like, you know, learning to fast. How am I ever going to fast if I can't even listen to the Holy Spirit about whether to go to the vending machine and buy a candy bar, you know? So I just recommend you just add on one area at a time. We're supposed to live with our entire lives to surrender to him. And if we can't even do it with the tangible things, it's going to be harder to do it with the spiritual things. So when it comes to a time of persecution and real struggling, it's going to be hard for me if I haven't developed the pattern of talking to the Lord about everything to actually stop and think, oh, they're telling me that if I don't deny Christ, then they're going to do X, Y or Z to me. Um, you know, I'm, I'm not going to have the pattern of going to the Holy Spirit and saying, what do you want me to do in this moment? You know, Jesus told us that in the end times, we're going to be dragged into court as witnesses to people. And um, how am I going to be available to let the Holy Spirit say those words that Jesus said he'll give to us at the time? We're not supposed to prepare ahead of time what we're going to say. How am I going to say what the Holy Spirit wants me to say if I haven't been developing this pattern of stopping, asking, listening, and then responding? <laughs> it's incredible we're having this conversation. Um so I just got back yesterday from a, a three day uh, conference that was it was meant to be. It was called like a recharge conference for pastors, for leaders, just to take a breather, just to step back. And uh, but I had so much going on. Uh, I really thought about not going. It was just like I'm like I'm like, I don't need that. You know, it's going to make me it will be less charge going to this <laughs> thing. And uh I didn't, I didn't like. I didn't read any of the information. I didn't know. I was just going, and I go, and uh, it was on prayer. And just one of my favorite speakers on prayer, uh, Bill Eliff. Um, he's a pastor here in Arkansas, but he nationally speaks through a ministry called One Cry. Uh, I've written a lot of books on prayer. He's a, a revival historian. Uh, but if, if people have followed Henry Blackaby, the Experiencing God, which had a tremendous impact on my life. Uh, he, he's it's like listening to Henry Blackaby, but so he's talking about prayer. Uh, Larry Barker, who was a guest on here uh, several months ago, uh, also spoke on prayer, and it was just incredible. And it, it was interesting for me because, and I've always uh, really the Lord got a hold of my life in eighth eighth grade as I had a youth pastor challenge us to begin doing devotional times, quiet times, however you want to want to say it, just a little bit in the Word. And, uh, you know, and Bible reading, uh, you know, Bible reading, prayer. I mean, it just started really small. Like we, we, he gave us these little books that had like a paragraph. We read a day and, and said a prayer, you know, five, 10 minutes. Uh, and now I started doing, I had study hall that semester. And I remember I would take, do study hall and begin that, that, begin that process, but just begin spending time with the Lord. And he began to speak into my life. And I know, you know, people hear that it's like, you know, you heard an audible voice. I'm, I don't even know how to describe it. The Holy Spirit's, you know, he does speak. It's, the Bible's very clear about it. Uh, but you, you'll run across people who are very uh, devout, very strong, you know, in Scripture and the Word, who will say, well, the Word's all we need. God doesn't speak. But to me, how can you read the Word and not see that the Holy Spirit is speaking into our lives? You know, Jesus said that, you know, like the sheep know the shepherd's voice, that we'll know his voice. And so that began a journey. It's been a lifelong journey in 2014. And, and for me, I have a hard, like that devotional time, that morning prayer uh, to me is it's, it's a kickstart for the day. And this is what you're talking about. Unceasing prayer as we're seeking the Lord throughout the day in all these different areas. But to me, you've got to have that concentrated time to, to kick it off. For me, I, I, you know, would wake up in the morning and try to, you know, hit my knees and pray and I like I'm I'm everywhere else. And so I began writing and jur basically journaling, basically writing a letter to the Lord every day and uh, or try, you know, trying every day. And but it was just hit and miss, really hit and miss. And 2014, uh, me and my wife did a 40 day devotional uh, by Mark Batterson called Drawing the Circle. It's one of the best things I've ever experienced with prayer. Transform our life. And we made a, a commitment in 2014 that we would not try to accomplish anything that day 
except number one, that time with the Lord. I mean, I'm a pastor. I mean, it looks like it would be easy to do, but I'd go to the office and things would just happen, you know, happen, happen, happen. It may be in the afternoon, but it's like I was going to fight for it sometime that day. She was staying home with the kids, uh, our two young kids at the time. She's like, talks about, you know, kids crawling on her, you know, and she's trying to have the time with the, the Lord. But it's just been this constant journey that's just improved, improved because it's, I talk about it's an art, not a science. Like you, we can't just give you, you know, step one, two, and three. It's something you you grow in and move in. It's and as we've started uh, this new venture locally, uh, we had really just prayed for this event we had coming up, and things didn't happen like we thought it would. I mean, just it was really this attack on our faith, and so we were. So Monday, we were just really kind of down, struggling with this because we just felt the Lord had revealed all these things, and then. What in the world? It didn't happen like we 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 thought he was leading us to. It was going to happen, and uh, and so kind of down with that. And then I go to this this conference and they're speaking on it, and it was just I, I just can't tell you how good it was for my soul to hear uh, hear this teaching of, about prayer, going through the Lord's prayer, and and those things. Uh, but the whole theme was unceasing prayer, and backing up. Uh, Two months uh, in August, the Lord really got a hold of me that I do decent at seeking His His will, like His direction. But then I fill in the details myself. That, like mm-hmm. you're saying, these little things every day. Like if somebody's listening, they're like, "Talk to the Lord about what you eat." You know, go. Now, I don't know if He ever will say, "Yeah, go ahead, go to the vending machine." You know, but <laughs> we talk. You know, talking about the, these things you eat and. But at the same time, my wife is very good at that, at this unceasing prayer, you know, what steps and all these things. So I began to lean into the Lord on details. I wish you had it before me. I, it, you know, it, it's it's mind blowing to me. So I have this planner. It's called the procrastination planner that I, I've been using the last couple of years. And it has like these seven tasks. And so I'd fill out, you know, anywhere from four to seven a day. I'd get, I'd get like three or four done on a good day. Um, and I begin just seeking the Lord about like, what should I, you know, what's the next task? What should I do, Lord? I don't, and leaning him, leaning into him for the details, relying on him for the results. And the last two months I've averaged 16 to 18 things a day like i mean and i know like i say that somebody's like i don't understand what that means you just we have to live it and see it and i just can't tell you how it's transformed my life and so anyway long story to say this is just where i've been and so lisa to hear you say the first thing uh is to to learn to hear the lord those steps and those directions and i want to add something and i know you would i believe you agree with me and this was the challenge I had this week was, is we need to learn to hear the, hear and walk with the spirit. Uh, our Galatians five twenty five says, stay in step with the spirit. We need to he, do hear that for direction and guidance, and it's there for he's there for direction and guidance. But number one, our time and our unceasing prayer should be intimacy with the Lord. It should be that relationship. And that was something I think I had started to move away from as I'm, I'm focused on, okay, what do I do and direction versus just, you know, loving the Lord. Um, so I mean, in, what there's some other, and I love that. This, I, I've never heard anyone talk about just start with something that you feel comfortable, you know, already are doing. And because it is, it, it's an art, it's something to learn. It can't be something that's, you know, we, you mentioned that passage. He'll tell us what to say when we're dragged in these mm-hmm. courts. Uh, you know, and I, I love the uh, illustration Corey Tim Boom gave, talked about her dad would uh, take her. T- uh, she was asking, you know, about you know, the Lord, for, you know, showing them what they need to do, what they need to do. And he, he said, OK, when is it I give you the train ticket uh, for Amsterdam? And she's like, well, it's when we're at the train station. And he's like, that's the way the Lord is. He'll give it when you need it. Yeah. Uh, but the thing is, she had to be with her father to get handed the ticket. And I, I think a lot of times we, we we use that as an excuse. Oh, the Lord will give it when we need it. We'll just do what we want to until that point. And then at the same time, but we've 
you know, if we're way out in left field, uh, we're not with the father. And so I think it's an important note with that. And in light of all of that, I, I started listening on my drive back, uh, the, the cost of discipleship by Bonhoeffer. I don't know if mm-hmm. those out there, if you've had the chance to read it, I've, I've had it forever. And, uh, and it, that's what he's talking about, uh, there and just, just incredible. So, sorry, it, you just hit a nerve <laughs> where my life is right now. Mm-hmm. Um, so the go-to spend time with the Lord. I mean, what would be something else that you would help to give in the na- uh, in helping navigate through those these crazy times? Well, I think that it's also important. Obviously, we need to know the Word. Um, I have been talking to a few friends recently about how Scripture lays out this pattern. You know, if we love Him, we'll obey Him. Yeah. Well, we love Him by knowing Him. So the more you know who God really is, the more you're going to love Him the more you're going to trust him, the more you love him, the more you trust him, the more easily you'll obey him. So as we continue to focus on, and I don't mean the head knowledge, I'm talking the same thing as you are there, that that relationship. I know that God's faithful to me. He's been faithful to me in this situation and this situation, and he's compassionate and he's merciful and he's sovereign and he's omnipotent and he's, you know, he knows everything. And, And as I really meditate on those things and know who God is, it gives me courage to move forward. It gives me a peace in my life and it gives me um, just a better ability to wait on him. You know, we don't have to know the timing, like when is this going to happen in end times events? I don't need to know that because I know God's got it. And I know the end of the story. I know where I know that I'm going to be faithfully in his arms one day. And so because I'm going to be there, I don't need to know every detail as it comes along and I can just have comfort and joy and hope and peace all at the same time, in spite of all of this craziness that's going on in the world. Mm. Incredible. So, I mean, of course we talk so much about the end times just before we got on, we're having this discussion about the rise of the antichrist and, and just the nature of that. And this seems to be what we get into all the time. (laughs) And Hey, if you've got questions, comments, I love to hear from you, especially I love to hear some of your, the best advice you've heard on how to navigate uncertain times. And if you want to say some things you've you've uh, pulled out from my book this month, I would love to hear that as well. too. <laughs> but uh, but I'm just thinking, I mean, because we've got several of our our friends who are on this, you know, with us all the time who are who were in the path of the hurricane that hit Florida. Uh, so Sherilyn's not here because of. She's getting the weather from it uh, there in North Carolina today and facing the impact from that. Uh, our good friends, Shannon and uh, Kim. And so Shannon was directly in the path and then it changed paths. And uh, then Kim, who's on the other side of Florida, was posting pictures of flooding. And I thought she was out of the, the mix. And I know there's other friends, too. We've got friends in South Carolina. Uh you know, I know Matt. You're in the Carolinas. If you, and it may be wow, you're not, not with us today is because of the power. And so we, we see that, and definitely our prayers go out. But I'm just curious. I mean, that's not per se in times, but man, if it's your house that got flooded, that got blown away, that's uh, you know, and you're dealing with all that stuff. I mean, how do you stand firm during that? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, and it is hard when it hits home on a very practical level to recognize that, you know, God's got this. And, you know, the other day, a week ago today, my daughter was in a car accident with her newborn in the backseat, and it was pretty serious. And um, she called and texted, and I was at a women's conference, and I didn't pick up, and then I was like, something's up for her to communicate with me that much. That was a pretty big crisis, you know. Fortunately, everybody's okay. Baby was fine. Car seat was not in good shape, but the baby was fine. And um, you know, she's beat up. She's got some whiplash, but difficult situation, especially for her, because to lose a car when you know she's still paying hospital bills and um, you know she just financially couldn't afford that at that point. Um, and so it's a hard time. Hard times come to us in many different ways, but still. God is our provider. And so it goes back to my knowledge of who God is. God is my provider. He's gracious to me. He's going to show favor to me. He's going to give me what's best. He knows what's best. And I can find rest and comfort in that. And um, 
sometimes it's not the practical. Sometimes it's just that, that, you know, the faith areas that we need to be strong in our faith before we can stand firm and make it through a situation. Um, I don't know. I feel like also when you look at events in the news, and I've said this before talking to you that when I watch the news nonstop, I can get so anxious. Mm -hmm. But when I'm when I'm trying to interpret what's happening in the news based on what the Bible already says is going to happen, I find so much more encouragement. Mm -hmm. It's like, Oh, you know what? This is happening over in the Middle East. I think the Bible talks about that. Here's this passage that you know, it seems like that's uh, related to what's going on in the news now. And then it makes me find comfort in that bad thing that's happening in the news, because I know that God in his incredible omniscience and desire to reveal truth to us has already told us through scripture. He's laid out the whole plan and told us what's going to happen. And if we're just aware and willing to trust what the word says and what he's already written, then we just have so much available to keep us strong and secure and at peace through the days that come. No matter what that struggle is, whether it's an end time struggle or it's just a, you know, a major hurricane or a car accident or a medical situation. It, it, I mean, and that's real life. It's it happens it can happen. I mean, we're just all one call, one text, or multiple calls to text before we pick it up away from, from that happening. And and the number one thing that causes people in the United States to, after they've professed Christ, they're, they've lived, you know, lived a Christian life or, you know, perceived a Christian life to walk away is bad stuff. And it's, it's amazing. I mean, how many times you, you hear that and, we just need to know bad things are going to happen. That's we're in a fallen world. These things are going to happen. And uh, it's, we, we need to just, we need to just know that. Uh, but then when it hits, uh, you know, having that faith to go through, uh, I've, have a, we have a, I have a friend that uh, lost her family in a car accident and uh, she went in the hospital. She was asked, are you going to continue to believe? And she's like, if I stop now, who's going to get me through this time? You know, what's the hope of of seeing them again if I just quit now? And so I but I know it's that temptation uh, just to I know just the discouragement we had this week. And it's like it was ridiculous, but just something that we felt like strongly the Lord was going to do. And it didn't happen like and I want to say like we thought it should because it just really seemed like. The Lord was in this. This was happening. It was kind of a strange kind of rug being pulled out from under you. And it just can send you spiraling. But being grounded, you know, finding those things that ground you, I, I think prophecy does that. I think the fact that we we see God's already come through in so many ways, the fact that we know what the ultimate hope is, we know what the, the, the winner is, I think it's important. I think that's one of the reasons through Stand Firm we, we dive into these details. Uh, is because of that. But I think it, in a, yeah. I was going to say, I think in addition to that, when we know uh, what scripture says and we're, we know it well enough that we're comfortable talking about it somewhat, it gives us opportunities to talk to people that don't know Christ or at, maybe they do know Christ, but they don't know what the prophecies are. Um, I mentioned this last Friday um, in the chat that um, I had this opportunity at work. So I do a job where I'm an implementation consultant and I help people get from their current software into our software. And I build a relationship usually about 90 days with these customers. And a lot of my customers are Jewish people, um, frequently from New York. But I, had, uh, I have a customer currently who's um, from Canada. He's Jewish and he, I knew from the beginning that he was based on his name but he had mentioned that he was the president of a synagogue. And I thought that was kind of an interesting phrase, but I brought up the holidays, the Jewish holidays that are going on right now. And we started this discussion about it. And he was so excited that I wanted to talk to him about it, that he just proceeded to talk and talk and talk and talk and talk. And um, it was really fun just listening to him because I really, I really love Jewish people and I love the Jewish culture. And he was answering questions I'd never heard from his perspective before. And we were talking about the red heifers and he actually had not heard about the red heifers. 
And so he proceeded to tell me, well, I can tell you what group of Jews it is in Israel that have called for those red heifers and starts this discussion on, you know, like he is a conservative Jew and what should, you know, what we should be doing to prepare for the ultimate day of atonement versus what the ultra Orthodox Jews are saying. It was just really interesting having that conversation. But as we continue the conversation, he's, he's mainly doing the talking. And he said, so we believe that the Messiah is coming. And when the Messiah comes, he's going to build the temple. So there doesn't have to be a temple before that. I know you believe the Messiah already came. And so I stopped him and I said, but I know I'm in agreement with you that the Messiah is coming. And it was just so neat because that was the first time he had to stop and just take a breath. Like, oh, like you could, you could just hear it caught him. Like maybe we are talking the same Messiah. And this whole time he'd been like explaining the Jewish faith to me and I appreciated everything he said, but we made a connection. Now, <laughs> if I didn't know prophecy and I didn't understand scripture, I wouldn't have been able to have the conversation with him to begin with about the festivals. Yeah. But in addition to that, I wouldn't have been able to say the Messiah you're looking for is the Messiah that I do believe is coming as well. And it was just really neat. And to the point that he then followed up with me and he, we haven't had another phone call since then, but he's emailed me and thanked me for that there. Of course he's on the Jewish holidays right now. And so um, when we have our next session, he said, well, he was going to, I forwarded, him some videos on the red heifers so that he could look into it and understand what that all has to do with Yom Kippur and, you know, why we have to, why they think they have to sacrifice the red heifer. And it's just really neat. So the combination of paying attention to the news and knowing scripture gives us many opportunities to share our faith. It's just oh, cool. It's incredible because we know, I mean, we, we know what's happening and, I just, I know so many, you know, within Christian, within Christianity, bypass prophecy and those things. And so we do have a, a great comment I want to uh, throw in there. Uh, Marion says, I just want to say that even if you're a pre-tribber like me, this is an important channel because it's biblical and we love the Jews here. Hey, thank you. Uh, we need to save on to that, save that and uh, and put it in our reviews. Uh, no, thank you for that. And yeah, no, we know. Uh, I think probably across this channel, many are, um, you know, come from different views with, with the rapture. And that's completely cool. Uh, to me, the focus is on the return, uh, the return of Christ, mm -hmm. you know. And uh, now I think, I don't know if you can dissect the two, but at the same time, <laughs> the focus is on the return. So we, we appreciate that comment. Um, and so we did have a comment at the very beginning. Gilbert got in and said, I'll be ready when Jesus Christ comes back and then goes through. And I think we're talking about navigating these times. I think being ready uh, would definitely be great advice. That's uh, what Jesus said. But I think going back to uh, Lisa, what you, you said is we need to start doing these things ahead of time. Again, one of my favorite books on the, uh, on this is uh, are we ready for Jesus by Nelson Walters. And he talks about some things like, like loving your enemies. Like, if you're not doing that now, how in the world do you expect that you're going to do that in in times like this? Um, you know, so your your book through uh, your devotional book uh, through Hebrews 11 uh, focuses on faith and encourages you know to have faith moving forward in these these times. What what do you feel like looking back at Hebrews 11 is so important for these these times? Well, one thing that's interesting is that. Um, those saints that are called out in Hebrews 11 are all looking forward to something that we still haven't attained. They have still haven't attained. And I didn't really catch it when I was studying Hebrews 11 until I, yeah, I was trying to memorize the whole chapter. And when I finally got to verse 40 and I realized verses 39 and 49 or 39 and 40 say that um, they haven't yet attained because we're all going to attain it together. We're all mm -hmm. going to get that. So they, you know, like earlier in the chapter, it talks about how Abraham was looking forward to the city that has foundations. And, you know, we know that whose designer and builder is God. We know we're talking about the New Jerusalem is what he was looking forward to. And if that theme keeps coming up through the whole chapter. And then we get to the end of the chapter. And here's the great crescendo before we go into chapter 12, which I think should be part of chapter 11. But um, so in, you know, at the end of the chapter, it's like, you know, the writer of Hebrews is saying, I could go on telling you more and more and more, but the point is 
one day we're all going to attain this together. And then since we're surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses that you've just read about, let us run with perseverance. Let's stand firm and hold to that. So I think the whole point, and, and then even if you go back to chapter 10, I think um, we, we miss it because obviously whoever wrote the book of Hebrews didn't uh, break it up in chapters and we yeah. tend to do this. But the end of chapter 10 is talking about standing firm and persevering in your faith. And that's what chapter 12 is talking about. And we've got the sandwich in between the examples of that. So I think the entire chapter of Hebrews 11 is focused on how did these, who are these examples that God has from scripture who stood firm? How did they stand firm? What was their circumstance in life? How can I equate with that? How do I go through the same types of things and, and stand firm? One of the examples from Hebrews 11 is um, Noah. So Noah was a preacher of righteousness. We know that from the book of Jude. So when Noah was building the ark, it was like a, a forerunner of the end times, right? It was the yeah. end times for most everybody there. Yeah. So we're very much in the same situation as Noah. So as I'm preparing for what lies ahead, am I sharing my faith? Am I telling people? Yes. Am I giving them opportunities to get on board the boat? You know, um, I just think the chapter Hebrews 11 totally goes with stand, standing firm. Yeah, absolutely. And they all looked ahead. For some reason I have been hit with preterism more than ever this past, just this past month. Um, it's not something that we've encountered a lot here, surprisingly. And uh, we we have and that idea that it's all happened, that it's all gone, that we're in the kingdom is, is, you know, now that would make me not want to stand firm. But <laughs> the, the fact that we have, you know, they're looking ahead and, you know, the blessed hope is the return. Well, we've got a, a few more minutes here and I want to turn the corner a bit and just get into some current events, uh, because just speaking of an uncertain times, I mean, is there a current event? that's got your interest or, or something that you're looking to occur soon? Well, I would definitely go back to those, um, you know, the red heifers. And I haven't read the article, but a friend texted me and said that one of them has been approved, apparently. Um, so I'm really excited for that. Their goal is to have the um, ashes of that sacrificed heifer available for Yom Kippur is coming up here in a few days so that they can ordain the priests and anoint the priests and then have priests that can actually perform sacrifices that is so biblical like there's yeah. we have to have daily sacrifices before the antichrist can put himself on the throne do away with the sacrifices and then put himself on the throne um, as we read in daniel and um i i think therefore that's an extremely pivotal event that's happening uh, of course, I, there are other events that are happening that can be more alarming. We have lots of headlines the past couple of weeks about developments with Russia and them talking about being willing to use nuclear weapons. And we've got this stuff, crazy stuff going on with with China. And, you know, there's lots of, of fronts that look like we could be heading to another world war. But, you know, that could be alarming. We could get ourselves all worked up over that. <laughs> or we can realize, you know, God's in control. He's going to be here for me. He's going to carry me through. He's going to ultimately, I know where I'm going. I know what's going to happen with me and um, find peace in that. But um, yeah, there's a lot of headlines out there right now that could be alarming, that uh, could scare people. But it's important for us to just look at them from the perspective of scripture. Yeah. And, and that's what I, it's, it's amazing. I mean, God could have detailed everything out. And that'd be helpful, I guess, in a lot of ways. Uh, but we have this final picture. And so we, but I don't think that leaves us in the dark here. We know the trajectory, like we, we know the Antichrist is going to stop the daily sacrifice. Therefore, the daily sacrifice has to happen. And therefore, the, you know, whatever that means, temple wise, whatever that, that means. And I think a lot of times we, people look at the start of the seven years uh, that agreement that's that's made as okay this is when that sacrifice starts and i don't think that's the case and this is something we talked about last week uh i, I don't see a precedence that it has to start that seven year period it could it could go 200 years and 203 and a half years you know uh <laughs> in, into that we just know it's going to stop midway in those seven years 
Uh, but uh, one of the concerns that I've had with launching Stand Firm, and I think it's so important, is the end of the age is Middle Eastern centric. That's the center stage. Uh, we believe the Antichrist is going to come out of a revived Ottoman Empire. It's all of these things. For that to happen, something has to change here in America, at least, uh, mm-hmm. has to diminish in, in those things. And unfortunately, you look at things, you're like, man, that's, I uh, definitely could seem very possible. And so I think like the, the, the rhetoric coming out of Russia, the, the, uh, you know, what's happened with the, the Nord Stream uh, pipeline and where that goes. I mean, that, you know, regardless of who did it, what happened, all of that, that can be a trigger on so many different ways. I, I think, you know, the world wars in the past were started on much less. And so I think that's uh, definitely something that didn't have to be, uh, you know, we could, ha- and I, I think it's, it's strange. It's always been like a soon world war three would be Armageddon. Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't think that has to be, you know, I think you could get world war 16 yeah. and it's, you know, still not be Ar- Armageddon. Uh, right. You know, we, we're told the players and, and those things, but I, I think we, we just look at what's going on with Israel we, we see what's going on in the Middle East, and it's like, man, I, you know, a lot of things are shaping up. God could put it on, on pause, uh, but it's just a lot of things. Uh, David, you, you sent me a, a message uh, as we're doing it at, at the uh, uh, Iran uh, making the, the missile strike in Iraq, which the, the Kurds, I mean, that's a very interesting development there in the Middle East. Uh, something uh, I was looking at beforehand, too, is you know, Turkey's talk of it and possibly invading Cyprus uh, going into some of the, the Greek Isles. And, uh, you know, I think one, one of the things that we read about the Antichrist is coming out of Devon and there's this debate. Well, is it Greek? I mean, is it Greece? Is it uh, Turkey? And, you know, which, which part of the, you know, which coast is it? And to me, I, I've always really s- <laughs> said it probably really doesn't matter because I would assume Turkey comes into uh, Greece at some points and at least takes takes the land in debate in between there. So to me, that's that, that was a fascinating uh, development. Uh, you know, one thing that we talked about is there seems to be an increase in earthquakes. Uh, but as I spent time this morning looking at stats, it's really something hard to chase down. It's it's really something that I thought was a lot easier to track and, and trace down. Uh, we are the last year to this year. Uh, is at a high point, uh, but it's not as high as it was seen in 2009, 2010. So, yeah, yeah. I actually, I actually um, made an Excel spreadsheet um, back in, I don't know, maybe 2006, 2007 and started tracking earthquakes. I'd go out on the uh, government earthquake site every day and track how many earthquakes there were. And I only was counting earthquakes over a certain magnitude. I think it was six and um, no, actually it was seven. And, we hit a year. Um, I don't remember when it was, maybe 2016, 2015, 2016, where there were no earthquakes for the whole year over seven. Or, And so I was like, well, this is not taking the trajectory I wanted. So I sort of <laughs> stopped watching it. But I mean, I do still probably yeah. three or four times a week. We're not having anywhere near as much earthquake activity as we had back in 2008. So um, I don't think, and there is enough verse in scripture that says there will be an increase in earthquakes. It says there will be earthquakes in various yeah. places, but yeah. I think that a lot of people have, I have heard a lot of people misquote the Bible as saying there will be an increase in earthquakes, and it doesn't actually say that. It doesn't I, and say I probably that. have said that. Now that you say it, I'm like, mm, okay, yeah. I take that yeah. take that back because you're, you're right. There will be earthquakes. It's not yeah. necessarily... And, and there's going to be specific earthquakes, you know, mainly at the sixth seal and at the sixth trumpet and yeah. at the sixth bowl. There's going to be specific earthquakes that happen. Um, so I think that there are going to be very specific earthquakes that are going to be ginormous. I mean, we have the one that's going to destroy everything in Jerusalem. Um, so there are going to be specific, very large earthquakes. But Jesus did not say there was going to be an increase. In that, the is number. A, that is an excellent point. Thank you for, for making that. Because uh, that's that's true. That's that's very true. Mm-hmm. Uh, oh, we have a comment coming in. Marion says, also want to say that God, because God is a is a miracles, it is possible, though not necessarily probable, God might bless a few of us in natural ways 
in not just spiritual ways, maybe even if times get bad. Um, yeah, I, 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 I'd like to talk to that. Um, yeah. So I have this theory. <laughs> I don't know. It's based on scripture. But you know how when the 5,000 were there and Jesus tells the disciples to feed them and only this one little boy has any food, but the boy gives up his food and Jesus miraculously multiplies it and feeds the crowds and all the you know women and children that were there as well. I believe that when it comes to it and things get really tough and we have to depend on the Lord and we're not looking to our own selves for provision, that we, we will be, that God will work miracles for us to provide, just like Maranon said, like for um, our physical supplies, multiplying our food. I mean, I don't think it's going to be like we're going to pull out the bowl of food and start breaking it into pieces and it's going to feed 5,000, but it could. I mean, God's the same yesterday, today, and forever. I think that he will do amazing and miraculous things for us to provide for us and bless us on a physical level if we're trusting him. Oh, yeah. I, I think of the, the image of Elisha. Uh, and the, the, the jars of oil that kept multiplying mm -hmm. out or, you know, Elijah being fed by ravens. Yeah, I, I absolutely. And, and I think that would be one of the things that we need to put in our repertoire now is learning to trust him now. Um, it, which it's, and that was something that came out of this week, this conference I was at this week too, again, is we always try to fix it ourselves. You know, we always try to work it out ourselves and getting to the point that we absolutely trust the Lord to provide you wait. My current devotional time right now is I'm reading through Isaiah and just looking for the points that Isaiah is speaking through the Lord and say, or Lord speaking through Isaiah talking about waiting and, and trusting the Lord. And it's overwhelming, you know, because the background there, you have the Assyrians breathing down the neck of, of uh, Judah and, Isaiah is telling Hezekiah to wait, to trust the Lord, not try to figure it out his, mm -hmm. his own way. And uh, but it can be tough. Uh, when I first launched Stand Firm and stepped out, you know, and no, no job, nothing, no arrangement, nothing, just stepped out, started doing this. And uh, someone asked me, they, they the feeling the Lord was calling them to missions. They're like, well, how, how is it, you know, stepping out of faith and not having all this stuff? I said, well, it's kind of like a like you're standing in a, a on a train track and the train's coming at you and uh, it's coming at you full force and you're in a tunnel and you can't step to the, the side. You, you know, you, I mean, I guess you could tuck tail maybe and, and run, but you, you can't step out of it. It's coming, but you know, the Lord's going to stop and he likes to seem to like drive it right to your nose right. <laughs> and, 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 and stop. And, and, you know, but I haven't seen anything to what some of you have experienced and, and what some of our brothers and sisters around the world have. And we ain't all seen anything like we're going to see at the end of the age. And so, you know, I, I just know personally just how difficult it is just to lean in, just to wait and trust. But if, if we don't begin to build that faith muscle in God's provision, I mean, that's that's the big threat is is the buying and selling is the food and th those things. That's the big threat that comes with the taking the mark and those things at the end. You know, that's, and one of the things that fascinated me, and I wrote about this in spiritual prepper is the city of Thyatira as they've done archeological work there. One thing they, they found, it was heavily uh, built in the, uh, the, like the guilds uh, work guilds. And like, depending on where you, you know, what kind of work you did, you had your own, they had their own, you know, patron God that they would worship and do these banquets to and all these things. So if you're silversmith, you had the silversmith God, you know, so on, so on, whatever it was. And so as they became believers in that city, they be, weren't participating in those things. The others in those voc vocations would then persecute them, lose the, they'd lose their jobs. And they were, they're basically, you know, they weren't taking the mark. And because of that, they were suffering. Their families were suffering and I think that's a, a picture of just regardless, even end of the age, just the struggle we, we will go through and just having that muscle of faith, you know, not just faith towards salvation, but faith in the everyday provision, the everyday life. Uh, I think absolutely. That's such a, such a great point. That's something I, I don't think about, but God can handle it. One of the quotes that came out of this conference I was at, uh, and it's taken me, I've, I've been trying to wrap my mind around it the last couple of days uh, is that the need 
our needs are messengers of God's provision. That, that is interesting. We look at our needs as problems, uh, but looking at our needs as an opportunity for God to work. I can't say I've mastered that by any means, but that's yeah, been that's, the challenge. That's a cool concept. Yeah, I, so it's a tough one, but, yeah. but, but it is. Um, so just a few more minutes. It's been quiet on the question front here. Uh, but we're glad that those are on, and I've just really enjoyed this discussion. Um, so let's let's close with okay, we we spent this month talking about navigating uncertain times. I know we've already given some advice, but what what's the charge for the Stand Firm family moving forward from this month? Well, I would say that our charge is to um, love the Lord, know the Lord, love the Lord, and know his word, and commit to just standing on it, doing what it says, and trust in him for whatever the results will be. Stick to it. <laughs> and we, we haven't talked that, I don't think we've talked through this, but so through Stanford Parents, I talk a lot about the five W's and one H, uh, the six spiritual prepper steps. But it's exactly what you you've just said. Uh, you've talked about being in, you know, walking the spirit, the, you know, having the word, you know, knowing prophetically what's going to happen. And uh, so the, the five W is uh, warning uh, here and heed the warnings to realize they apply to you. I think that's a big part of it. I mean, we and that's why we talk so much about what's what's going to happen when we see in the word. Uh, but then walking in the spirit, being in the word. And I, I think and, and you've said this, you can't separate the two they've got to be together um and then the whole story and that's of course what we, we do here uh but then i think work um is that the fifth w is a lot of times we've got to be moved by the holy spirit to share and this and you've said this as well the opera taking the opportunities to share not just prepare and uh and then the the, the h is have faith and um it's what it all comes down to uh is you know we read scripture to the just shall live by faith. We need to live by faith, uh, but we need to not wait till the problems. Uh, we need to begin to do that now. Uh, Lisa, any last words for today? No. Not for your life, for, <laughs> for today. <laughs> no, it's been it's been really good to uh, focus on this this month, I think. Um, and I think it came at a really opportune time. So much going on in the world right now, and we've got um, a possibly scary month ahead with elections in November. And, um, you know, we don't know where, where things are heading. So we do need to be prepared to navigate. A absolutely. And uh, th there's several things that we had planned this month that didn't, didn't work out. And just one of the main discussions I wanted to have is try to fix it politically, fix it on our own. It begins coming to the Lord right. and you go throughout the Old Testament. That's the same that's the whole story, you know, over and over again was this cycle. And you see it mostly, especially in judges over and over, but it's the whole history of Israel as a, as Gentile believers, we've repeated that, that process as, as well as, as turning away from the Lord, turning to our own devices, realizing they don't work and then crying out. And uh, I think we need to do more crying out uh, and letting God work. Lisa, thank you. Everybody, thank you for tuning in. If you're checking this out later, so glad you, you did. We do this every Friday uh, at noon Central, uh, noon Eastern, 11 Central, where I'm at. Uh, but glad that you're here. Glad that you're on. And we just want to encourage you to stand firm. Thanks, everyone.